Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I have an exciting word to share with you all today. It is a rhema word. It is a word that the Spirit of the Lord has deposited to my spirit. And I want to share with you what the Spirit of the Lord would like to convey. It's about our current times that we're all facing, as well as the post-election victory. So stick with me throughout the entirety of this video and you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Um, I thank you for all your support and so I'd like to just jump right in and I'm going to open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to share and to convey your word. I pray, O oh Lord God, that hearts would be receptive, O oh Lord God, and that they would hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour, Father God. And I pray that it would bring about the change that you would like to see, O oh Lord God. And I remember, Lord God, to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, for you alone are worthy. Father God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In Jesus Christ's name I have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Abba. All right. So um, on Friday, this past Friday, a scripture verse was deposited to my spirit. And then on Saturday, I was responding to some messages on, on uh, YouTube. And one of my viewers, Brad, he confirmed that very scripture. And then throughout the course of the week, I've had another three more confirmations of that word. So I decided to take a look at the word because obviously the spirit of the Lord is trying to say something to me. And so it led me to um, uh, Second Kings chapter six. And this is where Elijah, the prophet that we spoke about last week, he was, um, he was telling the king of Israel all the things that the um, king of Syria was um, about to do. And so the king of Syria was getting frustrated because he was like, you know, he called his servants and he was saying, you know, are you guys betraying me basically? Because everything I'm, I'm about to do, they seem to know in Israel. And then the servant said, no, it was Elijah that's been telling the king everything that you, you know, you've been thinking about in your bedroom sort of deal. And so um, the king sent, you know, his army after Elijah and the people of Israel. And so um, Elijah's servant saw this great um, army surrounding him and he became very fearful and, you know, he, he, he said to his master, Elijah, that, you know, um, we're surrounded. And Elijah said to him, and this is the scripture verse, and it's found in um, chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse uh, 16. And it says, he answered, this is Elijah answered and said, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Right? And so then Elijah prayed that the eyes of his servant would be opened and the eyes of his servant became open, the spiritual eyes, and he saw a host of army of God, right? Of the angels of the Lord surrounding those that were um, surrounding them. And so, you know, and it greatly outnumbered those that were against them. And so, the Spirit of the Lord would have me to share with you all that no matter what you see going on currently, no matter how many opposing opinions and views out there and the media and everything else that you're seeing and hearing, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, right? That God is in our midst, right? And those that are for us are way greater and outnumber those that are against us, right? And I was brought back to a time when I owned a cafe, my husband and I, and it was something that my husband wanted to do. And after a while, that season changed and, you know, God would want us to move on to do something else. And my husband went to corporate and, you know, went back um, to do work and he was given an, a great offer that he couldn't refuse. And so I was left alone there. I had never done that kind of work before and much less to do it by myself. And so 
I decided to sell the cafe. And when I went to sell the cafe, there was opposing forces that came up against me, Bure bureaucratic forces, you know, the manager of the uh, municipal building that we were in, as well as the city council, the fire department and all these people. And they, they stopped a sale that was about to go through. And when I found out about it, I approached them and they wanted me to spend tens of thousands of dollars to um, make changes that I was not in a position to do. And I prayed and I called my pastor at the time to help me pray. And he joined in agreement with me and prayed. And I had a meeting against all these city, city councils, the fire marshal, the manager of the municipal building. And, you know, I was greatly outnumbered in the physical, but in the spirit, right? We know that if God be for us, who can be against us? And so long story short, yes, I won the battle and, you know, God gave me the victory and I was able to sell the cafe and move on to the next season of my life. And I say that to give God the honor, the glory and the praise because the battle belongs to the Lord, right? And so if God has given you a word for these times, stand on that word, stand on firm, right? Do not retreat. And I'm speaking especially to those who have been given the spirit of a prophecy, right? Do not retreat what God has given you, what God has said for you in these times, right? You know, you have to stand firm and know that the God that you serve is greater than any other, right? Because the scripture tells us greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world, right? And the gods of this world, the Baals and the deceptive spirits, right? They will fall to their knees, right? Because our God is God. And, you know, even as in the days of Esther, when the scripture says, who knows if you have been called and appointed to this time for such a time as this. And so if you perish, you perish, but you must stand on the word of God. Do not retreat, right? Do not go back and, and uh, join in agreement with those opposing spirits, right? Because the word of the Lord, you must stand in agreement. There is power in agreement, right? And like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? God will show up in the midst of that fire, right? And God will 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 fight that battle for you because we know that the battle belongs to God the battle is not ours right and so i say all of this to say those that are for us are far greater than those that are against us right and the other part that the the of the scripture that the um spirit of the lord would have me to share is that after Elijah asked for God to open the eyes of his servant that he might see, God, um, Elijah asked God to close the eyes of the enemy. And so God closed their spiritual eyes and discernment, and they weren't able to discern. And Elijah led them back into the camp, to Samaria, in the midst of Israel, right? Those that they were opposing and against. And so they were right there, a target for the enemy. But hear the heart of God, right? I'm going to read for you what it says. So this is 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 20. And it picks up and it says, And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and there they were inside Samaria. Now, when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elijah, my father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? But he answered, you shall not kill them. And so what the spirit of the Lord is saying here, many have been deceived in this last days, right? They've been chasing after, you know, the gods of Baal 
and the false gods and the false prophets of this day and they have they, their spiritual eyes have been closed and they have been deceived but god is allowing an opportunity that when the victory takes place right the battle is the lord's but the victory is ours and when the victory takes place right their eyes will be made open and they will see what they have done right and that their hearts had been turned against God himself, right? But God does not wish that any would perish. No, you know, God does not want us at that time to become incensed against them or to become condescending or hurtful or ostracize them in any way. It is God's heart for us now to show them love, right? God said to love the Lord thy God with all our hearts as and to love others as we love ourselves and so this is a great opportunity as the spirit of the lord pours out his spirit upon all flesh it's an opportunity for a great harvest for us to join with god and to win souls for the kingdom of god and to love on our brothers and sisters who have been deceived by these these deceptive spirits right you know i have had about four different groups of people coming up against me trying to tell me that i need to retreat and that i need to um, retract what the spirit of the lord has shared with me but like i said there is power in agreement so you cannot agree with those opposing forces and when they see when their spiritual eyes have been made open it is our opportunity to love them back to their master and i just want to read this other verse for you because it's important he said then he prepared a great feast for them and after they ate and drank and he sent them away and they went to their master and that is god's heart right god wants the people to come back to him and luke chapter 4 verse 18 states uh just hold on a second it states that this is the purpose of every spirit-led believer to proclaim the good news of our father to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to release the oppressed right and so that is god's heart right god wants everyone to see and know that he is god he doesn't want people to be spiritually blind right and so when this um great awakening comes right and a great outpouring of god's spirit comes love love unto others and treat them the way you would want to be treated and win those souls for the kingdom of god so that god will have the honor the glory and the praise and the victory in this hour amen thank you so much for watching i appreciate you all like i said don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as always Remember to keep your sights on the things that are eternal, for it's in the eternal things that we can move beyond the walls.